Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about this factors responsible for your abundance of insects. Okay. So today we are going to discuss about this. What are the different factors are there? That means what are the different characters are there in case of insect which makes them the most abundant, the largest uh, creatures in this environment. Okay. So now here you can see we can categorize these things into six categories like um, first one is your structural perfection okay next one is your developmental characters then uh, the, their specificity to food then their reproductive potential protective adaptation okay and at last your diverse habitat so these are the main six categories okay under which some subcategories are also there for which insect are the largest creatures okay so at first we will discuss about your structural perfection so here you can see some points are there like your exoskeleton small size body quicker speciation okay then there uh, this wings then they have the wings they have the six number of legs they have the compound eyes okay so many other characteristics are there we will discuss one by one okay so at first you can see first one is your exoskeleton insect body has the outer exoskeleton or the body wall or the integument you can tell which have different kind of functions what are the functions they prevent water loss from the body that means they prevent desiccation then they provide a physical and mechanical uh, protection towards the body they prevent these injuries okay they provide area for muscle attachment okay then they give strength to the body and uh, area for uh, muscle attachment and all okay so these are the different advantages of having their exoskeleton okay so here in this picture you can see huh, this is the exoskeleton of the insect okay now second one is your what small size body you see if small size body will be you see huh, this is the hair follicle this is the size of this head louse okay that is the smallest creatures yes or no small creature you cannot tell smallest okay so here you can see due to this small size what happens they require less space that means no competition for space food time energy nothing yes or no so definitely what will happen their population can be increased again they can easily escape from the natural enemies third one is your quicker speciation due to this highly uh, evolution or due to the short life cycle and all what happens they can uh, quickly uh, make different different species like you see here all the genus are same but you see these are different species how you see here no marking is there in this white strip but here the marking is there here that is different here that is different yes so that means this pattern of wings so many things are there even physiology things are also involved which makes new new species of the insect that means within a very short time period they can create more number of species which help them for their increase in population again in some cases we will discuss in ipm course that this uh, modification of the species or uh, maintaining a new biotype which help them to also escape from different kind of pesticide use or any kind of resistant variety use okay this is not in the course now not in this topic we are not going to discuss about that next one is your functional wings hexapod locomotion and your compound eyes okay so what is the benefit you see due to this uh, wings what will happen they can travel anywhere wherever the food is there wherever the mate is there wherever they need to lay their eggs or suppose the environmental condition is not good they can go away to other places where the favorable situation is there migration yes or no for all of these things what happens your wings are important most uh, thing is what for gathering the food yes or no second one is what this hexapod locomotion you, you can see six number of legs are there yes or no huh? for them six number of legs are there that means you can then three pair but you see leg is there means they can walk yes or no that is the major advantage again in grasshopper they have a jumping type of legs which help them for jump in case of cockroach they have a very uh, what a sweet muscle running type of legs which so that's why they can hide uh, if light will come yes or no but uh, suppose uh, your mole cricket for them fossorial leg is a dung beetle fossorial for digging purpose yes or no again some water insect are there for them that will be modified for swimming purpose you see uh, their legs are variously modified we will discuss in the leg part okay 
uh, that is also important uh, for different different uh, kind of purposes they can use their legs in case of honeybees again uh, so many concepts are there okay so now coming to one more thing is the stability okay stability means what while walking what will happen here you can see this picture suppose this insect uh, came from this place to this place so what is happening now here you can see you say suppose in the first place this black color huh these are in the resting phase that means which legs are uh, going for forward movement this other three that means they are standing in a tripod movement next phase what will happen you see the opposite one okay they will be stable on the ground and other three will be walking so what are, what is happening here they are giving a stability whenever they are walking they will be standing in a tripod fashion which give them more stability for walking smoothly walking properly without uh, falling here and there understanding huh? that is the major advantage of having six number of legs with a tripod fashion while walking next one is what your compound eyes okay here you can see this is the compound eye this is the compound eye one pair of compound eyes will be there but you see this one this one this one these are the this one this one this one these are the simple eyes otherwise known as ocelli what is the advantage of having compound eyes you see anyhow eyes means for visualization what is the advantage you see if you see this properly huh, like this huh? this is the outer area this one is visible now this is huh? and these are the different omatidium this is known as what your single cells omatidium what is the use you see for visualization only but suppose what will happen this person is damaged due to any kind of accident then what will happen others are there for visualization if also one two three number of omatidiums are damaged other omatidiums are there for visualization that is a major advantage okay so this is what you are having your functional wings that is for legs and compound eyes next one is your scattered sense organ scattered sense organ means what you can see okay in their legs okay in their antenna in their body in their mouth okay uh, everywhere okay most of the body part what happens outside the surface they have this particular nervous receptor scattered sense organ you see in the skin in the hair it is coming that is also a sensory organ that will help them for uh, gustatory for testing olfactory for smelling okay tactile mechanical receptor for touch and all okay uh, this uh, hygro receptor are there for humidity detection in the antenna in some insect then again uh, auditory organs are there okay then the sound producing organs are there okay then that is scattered throughout the body that's why it is known as scattered sense organ which make them more preferable to different different functions okay what is next one direct respiration in human body what is happening through the nose we are respiring and the oxygen is coming and going but in case of insect what happens directly to each cell direct respiration will be there like see this one huh? here, here are the spiracle directly oxygen will come and that will pass out throughout the cells okay to the respective cells the oxygen will travel direct respiration will be there trachea will be there tracheal trunk will be there okay tracheal trunk will be there okay and this uh, particular spiracle will be there which will be opening and taking the oxygen and removing the carbon dioxide and when it is not is in, uh, in use that will be closed and no water loss from the body will be there because there is the valve mechanism okay next one is what your enteronephric excretion okay excretion you know nephric you know yes or no in biology we have studied so what is entero entero means what exo means outside entero means inside excreta will be outleted inside first then through the rectum and anus it will be excreted outside okay that is what our enteronephric excretion you see body excreta came like this through this malpighi tubules in the mid gut hind gut joint uh, what junction it came it went to the rectum then to the anus and then taken outside this is what enteronephric excretion so what is the major advantage here that is important yes or no reabsorption will be there what is that absorb again yes or no suppose the excreta came to this place in case of some insect which have cryptonephridial condition what is that again from this particular area what will happen again those essential water essential moisture essential uh, ion nutrients they will be again recaptured okay reabsorbed into this again that will be metabolized okay that is what your cryptonephridial condition okay so these are the advantages of having this kind of excretory enteronephric system 
Next one is your what? Resistance to desiccation. How they prevent loss water or how they prevent uh, loss of water or how they conserve moisture water. Those two things we will discuss. How they prevent the loss of water? First thing is this uh, uh, opening closing valve of this paracle. If paracle is closed, cannot be done. In case of egg stage, they have the corian which prevent the water loss. In case of larva and adult stage, what happens? They have this integument. In integument, what happens? It is subdivided. First is divided into cuticle, epidermis, basement membrane. Cuticle is again divided into epicuticle, procuticle. Epicuticle is again divided into cement layer, wax layer, polyphenol layer, and your cuticle layer. So, in this wax layer, what happens? They are the waterproofing layer. That means they will prevent this water loss from the body. That is important. At least you remember, wax layer is known as waterproof layer. Waterproof layer means they will prevent the water loss from the body. What is conservation of water? Capable of utilizing metabolic water. Rectal reabsorption, I already have told. In case of terrestrial insect, what happens? As they excrete uh, this uric acid, they use very less amount of water for this metabolism. Okay. These are what your all structural perfection. Now coming to developmental characters. You see different stages of insect are there, like egg stage is there. Okay. This is the larva stage, yes or no? This is the pupa stage. Now from this what will happen? The adult will come out. Yes or no? Huh? Okay. So four stages are there. Egg stage, larva stage, that one is your pupa stage, then you see pupa will come, then your adult will come. So why I am telling you see anyhow egg stage and the pupa stage, they are the non-feeding stage, no competition, nothing, only for space there may be competition. But if you think about the larva and adult, their feeding habit is different. Okay. You see larva will feed on the leaves here you can see. Yes or no. Huh? And adults are feeding upon the flower. They are not feeding on the flower. Yes or no. They are standing upon the flower. What they are feeding? They are feeding on the nectars. Okay. So you see the food uh, requirement is different. Yes or no. So due to which what happens? The competition in between the species, same species what happens? That will be reduced in some cases. Okay. Then specificity to food, what is that? Already we have discussed. Stage to stage, the food preference will be different. Second one is what you see: uh, sucking paste are there, leaf eating uh, insect are there. Sucking paste means uh, this aphid, jacid, mealybug, you take, they will feed on the sap of the plant. Mosquito will feed on the blood of the animals. Yes or no? So now this caterpillar will feed on the leaves. Yes or no? Like this, termites will feed on the starch material, this cellulose material this wood and all yes or no? you see that much diversity is there so definitely no competition will be there among them yes or no sometimes even extreme specificity will be there suppose uh, sugar can top borer that means they will attack on the top so early suit borer that means they will attack in the early stage not in the late stage some are internal borer some are stock borer okay like this uh, so much of diversity is there according to the stage of the plant also okay according to the part of the plant also so definitely your uh, competition will be reduced yes or no huh? next one is what your reproductive potential what are these things some important things are there first is you have to understand what is fecundity generally comes in the exam what is fecundity that is your egg laying capacity that is known as what your fecundity why it is important you see in case of insect like your honeybees or queen termites they can lay up to in case of honeybees, 1000 number of eggs per day. In case of queen termite, that is 6000 to 7000 eggs also they can lay, otherwise 1000 to 2000 eggs minimum they can lay. Yes or no? Huh? Okay. So, this is what your high fecundity. What is next? Your short life cycle. You see corn aphid, okay, they produce 16 nymphs per female which reaches the adulthood within 16 days. That means within 16 days, life cycle is completed. So, what is the benefit? If life cycle is less, then automatically what will happen? Production will be more. Within very few times, so many populations are coming. So, in a specific time, so much of abundance will be there. So, definitely that is the advantage. Yes or no? Huh? Short life cycle. Then next one is careful selection of egg laying sites and protection of eggs. They are protecting their eggs and all. Okay. Then uh, exhibit parental caring like your progressive provisioning in case of bees okay mass provisioning in case of your uh, wasp how you see 
you see huh mass provisioning in case of wasp what what they are doing they are giving the food here larva will take it on them mass at mass they are giving the food but in case of progress progressive you see what is happening in every stage of the larva the honey bees will come and they will feed with this larva this is what your progressive provisioning okay again you see in each cell they will provide the foods but not here okay next one is what your egg covering you see this is the hairy mass anal tuft of hair and this is the eggs that was covered above that like this they are covering their eggs protecting their eggs this is what this is the utheka of your praying mantid okay utheka praying mantid from which so many number of neems praying mantids will come out parthenogenesis you, you must be knowing yes or no what is parthenogenesis without fertilization they can lay their eggs that means if mate is not required still they can reproduce that is advantages for their multiplication what is polyembryony from a single egg so many number of embryos will come polyembryony yes or no huh? from a single egg so many number of springs will come out so that is advantages anyhow the population will be very high another one is there what is that pedogenesis every time you might have noticed adult will reproduce adult will mate then they will reproduce but in case of insect what happens there is a concept that is what a pedogenesis there what happens from the immature stage directly immature stages will come out that means suppose this is a larva stage inside which the egg is there eggs will develop into larva then directly the larva will come out here you see huh? larva is coming outside larva is coming outside okay so this is what your pedogenesis this phase the next one this phase now you see older one is somewhat uh, degenerated and new one has been formed understood this is what your pedogenesis then protective adaptations and devices what is that morphological is there physiological is there what is morphological you see morphological means what behavioral also is there okay morphological is what you see if you see directly this picture what you can tell nothing is there stick is there if you see directly what you can tell this is the leaf only but here the insect is there you see huh? this is the stick insect this is the leaf insect just like a apparent that means they can uh, resemble their uh, background so natural enemies will be confused they cannot attack them yes or no similarly what happens in case of coleoptera and beetles this one huh? their covering will be very hard then what will happen no one can attack them easily because their protective covering the wing is very hard like silt okay so that will help them huh? morphological adaptation next one is what physiological what is that you see the sting bug they will produce some odor okay which produce some foul smelling in case of this blister beetle they will produce this cantharid in very very important note it down okay it is very very important which may come in the exam okay this cantharidin that is very very important produced by your blister beetle smeloide family okay that is irritant and blistering agent are there similarly if you see this particular solitary butterfly lemon butterfly huh you see this projection will come out if they will be coming across any kind of natural enemies they will show a scary appearance towards the natural enemies again they will produce some chemical which may repel those insect okay that is also characteristics of your lemon butterfly again what they do they will look like a just like a bird's excreta so that what will happen birds won't come to feed on them they will resemble a bird's excreta for which what happens birds won't come to eat on them okay next one is what your behavioral adaptations that is known as what your you see feign death which is otherwise known as thanatosis if you toss them what will happen they will be crinkling like this or they will fall down on the uh, ground they will close up their uh, legs touch me not plant is there if you toss them what they are doing closing their lips tortoise are there if you toss them they will withhold their uh, what uh, legs inside their cell yes and just like that huh? you see some insect are there like a colored potato beetle when they will be disturbed they will draw their legs beneath and drop to the ground and pretend as if dead that is known as what your fang death or thanatosis 
Next one is what construction of your protective structure like this tormentarium here you can see for termite. This is what your rice case swarm. This is the case. This is the case. This is the case inside which the larva will be there. This is what your big worm protection their home. Okay, inside which big worm will be there. This is what your honeybees. Okay, here one more thing you can see this example. You can add honeybees also in case of fissure as well. If it go and touch a honeybee, what they will do? They will sting you. That is what your physical production of the physiological production of the B toxin, epitoxin, yes or no, which is giving pain to you. At last, your diverse habitat, you can see, okay, from the hair of the human being up to pole, up to uh, what? The stone, mountain, everywhere, insects are available. Yes or no? Huh? Due to their diversified adaptations, anywhere they can adjust. Okay. So thank you all. I hope you understood all of the things. Somewhat I was speed because it may take much more time. Okay. Somewhat story type. And uh, here the main thing is what you have to remember those uh, headings and you can easily write down with some example. That is also important. Okay. So thank you all. Have a nice day.